Hi, Omer. Thanks for the discussion. Um, as you know, we at Walden Catalyst are very excited to have this opportunity to lead this um, Ingonyama's newest financing round and to join you and your team on this exciting direction. So maybe you could begin by introducing yourself and Ingonyama to our LPs. Uh, my name is Omer Shlomovitz. I'm based here in uh, Israel, in Tel Aviv. Um, my background is uh, technical, so I've been doing um, either in academia or um, playing uh, some technical roles in uh, industry. Founded a couple of companies um, before starting in Gunyama. And um, with Gunyama, our mission is to build zero knowledge hardware accelerators. This is a very advanced uh, and, and cutting edge kind of technology and we want to become world leaders in. And maybe you can begin by explaining a little bit of the background. For example, what is zero knowledge? But maybe even before that, um, what's the context of the industry you're targeting? What are their problems and why do they need a startup like Ingonyama to be here? So, so Ziki, uh, zero knowledge uh, is, is um, it's a te technology well studied. It's coming from, from uh, like decades of uh, work in research in academia. This technology is fundamental in like in trustless computing, right? Like verifiable computation and even like privacy preserving computation. So um, as we observe in our market, which again very natural is, is the blockchain space with like based on trustless decentralized computing, um, we see that there is uh, a huge demand for this type of ZK. And basically it's everywhere. Like the two main problems now like uh, in, in blockchains are privacy and scalability and both of them are solved with this type of technology uh, zero knowledge basically everyone can verify um, very easily the computation so, so that's very very nice um, background on ZKP or zero knowledge proof can you now talk about why is this useful in our world maybe you can start by the problems today and then later on we can go on to you know, next five, ten years, whatever, what the future applications are. Right now we see use cases, again, in, in Web3, um, in, in three different areas, I can say. One is actual blockchains. Some of them aim uh, for different use cases, and some of them are built on this technology of ZK. It can be for privacy, it can be for scaling, it can be for uh, proof of work, it can be for many different reasons. The second uh, place we see it is what's called a layer two, which is Kind of like another layer on top of a blockchain um, and the third the third place we see it is with applications it can be in, in gaming it can be in like just new things that were not never possible before what you're explaining i think is that for the future web 3 the new the future of the internet this is like the next protocol that will allow that to scale with a very challenging requirement that trust must be established even though you never met each other ever before um, does that sound right yeah, that's about that's about right. And you said that it starts today with blockchains, and the, in the future it's going to be gaming and other kinds of new applications. So maybe you can connect that now to like, what is it that Ingonyama does to help that? So that's the the technology is ZKP. What does Ingonyama do? And then what are you seeing from from customers today that kind of echo and validate that they need what Ingonyama is doing. When we started our journey, it, it was very clear that this um, in a triangle of software algorithms and, and hardware, the hardware part of ZK was missing. It's very obvious that the right hardware for zero knowledge proofs for the long term, right, is, is going to be ASICs. So we are the company are uh, always kind of targeting towards uh, um, like the first generation, the first chip. Uh, and, and like trying to figure out who will be the target market customers for that chip. By, um, another thing to remember is that ZKP is, is the, this level of computation is built on, on, on cryptography, on you know, very complex mathematics, and the architecture is far from being trivial. So what we've been doing so far is trying to improve um, over and over and, and figure it out, figuring out, you know, just from, to begin with, what exactly it is that we want to build, right? Um, and what we discovered is that, besides the fact that ASIC is the solution, first FPGAs can provide uh, or can find some market today 
based on their um, unique properties of being energ energetically efficient and that you don't need an entire ZK architecture today to actually make an impact in, 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 the, like, in what customers are needing. Um, so while like, we can definitely see a future in the future the, the way that ASICs can, can scale and be used everywhere, right now um, we see a few different kind of models, right? So first is in mining. So companies that traditionally have done Bitcoin mining and also companies that are kind of more open into new, uh, new types of mining. So in both cases, they understand that there is a way to leverage ZKP kind of as, as, a, um, as a computation, as a very intensive computation and um, get some uh, economical value out of it. And this is what we explore with them today together. Um, another, um, another interesting uh, potential customers that, that we have today is about saving costs for running infrastructure. Right? So this is something that right now it, it is centralized, but it costs a lot to operate. Using the cloud, cloud-based FPGAs, we can provide a, a much cheaper infrastructure um, to these companies, which can provide for them a uh, huge saving. Could you kind of quantify the advantages uh, to your customer like today like is is do you have that today or is it just a theoretical number we, we take it very seriously to, to do the uh, the experiments and, and the benchmarks and uh obviously it depends right so we know that for um like a zk rollup that runs infrastructure today uh with like the most optimized way they, they can we can just by you know even without providing any type of acceleration they're going to pay like 30 percent of what they, are, they were paying before. Um, for the app developers, we can uh, we can take we can improve efficiency, the latency of running the proof by a factor of ten. Right. Very. It's very exciting to see, even though you're a very young company, right, um, less than a year old, uh, that you're already achieving some world class results. Uh, it's early days, as you said, but it's very exciting to to be part of that. And one final question is, um, why did you choose to work with uh, Wallet and Catalyst? Ventures, you know, we there's, it's not it was just my decision. I have partners, um, other investors, co-founders, and so on. But so I can just like comment on personally. I think I first connected really well with with, with Francis. Given that also Modern Catalyst is uh, deeply rooted with with semiconductor industry, which is something we really wanted. I was just like impressed by you know the the team, the track record, young obviously. Uh, and what he brings to the table like uh, blows my mind every time that he speaks. So um, it was a no-brainer decision for us. Well, thank you very much. It was a no-brainer for us also to uh, join the, uh, the party and join forces with you. So thanks so much, Omer. Thank you.